Now, when a drug interacts with the receptor, it binds to a specific site on the receptor molecule, typically referred to as the binding pocket or the active site. Now, the binding of the drug to the receptor is mediated by various intermolecular forces, including electrostatic interactions, hydrogen bonding, van der Waals forces, and sometimes covalent bonding. Moving on, first we will discuss is covalent bond. Now, the covalent bond formation occurs when the drug molecule possesses a reactive functional group such as electrophile, which is electron deficient moiety, that can interact with the nucleophile, which is electron rich group on the receptor. Now, the interaction between the drug and the receptor involves the transfer of electron pairs, resulting in the formation of the covalent bond. Now note here that I have specified more stable long-lasting interaction because the covalent bond can have significant implications. It typically leads to a more stable long-lasting interaction between the drug and the receptor compared to other non-covalent interactions. Covalent bond can withstand the effects of molecular dynamics and physical forces, allowing the drug to remain bound to the receptor for a prolonged duration. Moreover, the formation of a covalent bond can result in irreversible inhibition of the receptor's function. By covalently modifying the receptor's active site, the drug can permanently block or alter the receptor's activity, leading to the desired pharmacological effect. Now we will consider an example here of organophosphate poisoning. Now organophosphorus nerve agents, also called as nerve gas, has a phosphorus atom that reacts with the oxygen atom on the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. Now it contains three amino acid residues crucial for catalytic activity. The nerve agent binds to the serine 200. The covalent bond formation between drugs and receptor is not always desirable. In some cases, off-target or unintended covalent interactions can lead to adverse effects and toxicity. Therefore, the design and development of drugs that form covalent bonds with their target receptors require careful consideration and optimization to ensure both safety and efficacy. The next we have is electrostatic interactions. Now, in the context of drug receptor interaction, electrostatic interactions play a crucial role in determining the binding and recognition between a drug molecule and its target receptor. Now, electrostatic interactions arise from the attractive forces or the repulsive forces between charged particles. Now, let's say this is an example of digitalis. Within a drug molecule, certain functional groups or atoms may carry a partial positive charge, also known as the electrophile, or a partial negative charge, called nucleophile. Now, within the receptor molecule, specific amino acid residues may have a charged side chains such as positively charged lysine or negatively charged glutamic acid. Now, when a drug molecule approaches the binding site of a receptor, electrostatic interactions can occur between these charged regions. Positively charged regions of the drug can interact with the negatively charged residues on the receptor and vice versa. Now this interaction is known as Coulomb's law, which states that the forces of attraction or the forces of repulsion between two charged particles is directly proportional to the magnitude of their charges and inversely proportional to the scale of the distance between them. Now, one specific example of electrostatic interaction in the drug receptor interaction is the binding of the drug molecule digitalis, which is also known as digoxin because it is its active constituent to the sodium potassium atipase receptor. <clears throat> now, digoxin is a cardiac glycoside used to treat heart failure and certain heart rhythm disorders. It exerts its therapeutic effects by inhibiting the sodium potassium adipase enzyme, which is responsible for maintaining the iron balance in the cardiac cells. Now, the binding of the digoxin 
to the sodium potassium adipase receptor involves several electrostatic interactions. Now, the drug molecule digoxin contains a positively charged group called a cationic head group, which interacts with the negatively charged residues on the receptor site. In particular, the negatively charged glutamate residues on the sodium potassium adipase receptor interact with the cationic head group of digoxin through electrostatic interactions. Now, these electrostatic interactions enhance the binding affinity of digoxin to the sodium potassium adipase receptor, facilitating its inhibition of the enzyme. Now, this inhibition leads to increased calcium levels, improving cardiac contractility and reducing symptoms associated with the heart's failure. Now, the electrostatic interactions can contribute to the stability of the drug receptor complex and influence the binding affinity of the drug. If the charges are complementary and attract each other, they can enhance the binding of the drug to the receptor. On the other way around, if the charges are repulsive, they can hinder the binding process. Now let's discuss hydrogen bond. Now in the context of drug receptor interaction, hydrogen bonds are a type of non-covalent interaction that plays a significant role in molecular recognition and binding. Now hydrogen bonds occur when a hydrogen atom covalently bonded to an electronegative atom such as nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine interacts with a nearby electronegative atom. Hydrogen bond can form between a drug molecule and its target receptor when specific functional groups within the drug and the receptor possess hydrogen bond donor and acceptor properties. Now this is the hydrogen bond donor and this is the hydrogen bond acceptor. We'll discuss hydrogen bond donor first. Now hydrogen bond donor is a group or atom that donates a hydrogen atom, often attached to a highly electronegative atom, to form a hydrogen bond. Examples of the hydrogen bond donor groups in the drugs and receptors include hydroxyl groups, amino groups, and carboxyl groups. On the other hand, a hydrogen bond acceptor is a group or atom that attracts or accepts a hydrogen atom. Common hydrogen bond acceptor groups include oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine. Now, when the drug molecule approaches the receptor, hydrogen bonding can occur between the hydrogen bond donor in the drug and the hydrogen bond acceptor in the receptor. Now, the strength and specificity of hydrogen bonding depend on the geometry, distance, and polarity of the interacting atoms. Now, the hydrogen bonds are generally weaker than covalent bonds, but stronger than other non-covalent interactions such as van der Waal forces. They contribute to the stability and specificity of drug receptor interaction and providing additional attractive forces between the two molecules. Now, we will discuss an example. Let's consider the interaction between the drug molecule ibuprofen and its target receptor, the enzyme cyclooxygenase 2. Now, ibuprofen is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, commonly used for pain relief and reducing inflammation. In this example, ibuprofen undergoes hydrogen bonding with the COX-2 at the active side of the enzyme. Now, at the active side, there is a serine residue, which is serine 529, which establishes a hydrogen bond with the ibuprofen carboxyl group. Now the carboxylic acid moiety of the ibuprofen acts as a hydrogen bond donor and the oxygen atom within the carboxylic acid group acts as a hydrogen bond acceptor. Now this oxygen atom forms a hydrogen bond with the hydrogen atom of the serine residue in the COX-2. The hydrogen bond stabilizes the interaction between ibuprofen and COX-2, aiding in the binding of drug to its target. Now, this interaction is important for the inhibitory effect of ibuprofen on the COX-2. Now, what it does, it prevents the conversion of arachidonic acid to postraglandins and thereby reducing pain and inflammation. Now, hydrogen bonds can influence various aspects of drug receptor interactions. They can help orient the drug molecule uh, in the binding side of the receptor, uh, you know, ensuring optimal fit and interaction. Additionally, Hydrogen bonding can enhance the selectivity and affinity of a drug for its target receptor. Now, next we have 
is Wonderwall interactions. Now, Wonderwall interactions are basically caused by temporary fluctuations in the electron density, resulting in the creation of interstitial dipoles. Now, these dipoles induce complementary dipoles in the neighboring atoms or molecules, leading to attractive forces known as Van der Waal forces. Now, Van der Waal interactions are a type of non-covalent forces, basically, and they also help in molecular recognition and binding. Now, there are two types of Van der Waal interactions, under dispersion forces and dipole-dipole interactions. Now, before discussing these two, I want to grab your attention to the attributes of the Van der Waal interactions. Now, the first attribute is they are additive. What I'm saying is several intermolecular interactive forces add together to form a quantifiable force. Next is they are non-directional, like they can attract atoms or molecules from all directions. The next is they are weaker than ionic and covalent chemical bonds. Now they act only for a short range. The interaction is significant when molecules are positioned, you know, closer. Now they are independent of temperature, except the dipole-dipole interactions. Now we will discuss London dispersion forces. Now London dispersion forces are intermolecular forces that occur between two atoms or two non-polar molecules due to the motion of electrons. Now, an atom consists of a nucleus and electrons that move in orbits. At any time, the electrons can cluster around one part of the atom. As a result, the atom becomes negatively charged at one end and positively charged at the other end, resulting in instantaneous dipole. Now, this weak and temporary dipole then influences neighboring atoms through electrostatic attraction and repulsion. Now, these induced dipoles are attracted to one another. The strength of the dispersion forces increases as, you know, the number of atoms increases or the chain increase. Now, examples include helium, chlorine and carbon tetrachloride. Next we have is dipole-dipole interactions. Now, the dipole-dipole interactions or dipole-dipole forces arise because of the electric polarization induced particles. They are similar to the London dispersion forces, but they occur in molecules that have a permanent dipole. Here, the negative end of a polar molecule attracts the positive end of another polar molecule. Now, this attraction between these two molecules is known as dipole-dipole forces. Now, hydrogen bonding is also a part of dipole-dipole force. Examples include water and hydrogen chloride, which is HCl. Now, Van der Waal interactions are important in the drug receptor interaction because they contribute to the overall stability and binding affinity between the two molecules. The Van der Waal interactions also contribute to the size, shape, and distribution of electron density. Now, this helps, uh, you know, in the drug design. Researchers can optimize the binding affinity and selectivity of the drug for its intended, like, target receptor. Next we have is hydrophobic interactions. Now the hydrophobic interaction is a phenomenon that occurs when a non-polar molecule or a hydrophobic region of the molecule come together in an aqueous environment. It is driving force behind the behavior and the organization of many biomolecules such as proteins, nucleic acids and lipid membranes. Now let's say this is a, a polar particle. Now, what this, when it comes in contact with the water, which is a polar molecule, you know, meaning it has a partial positive charge on one end and a partial negative charge on the other end, when this non-polar molecule or the hydrophobic region come into the contact with water, they disrupt the hydrogen bonding network formed by the water molecules. And water molecules must rearrange themselves around, you know, a polar particle. Now, this apolar particle then aggregates and makes a clump together. This behavior is known as hydrophobic effect. Now, the non-polar molecules effectively exclude water from their vicinity, creating a local decrease in the system's free energy. Now, this hydrophobic effect is crucial in many biological processes. For example, it plays a significant role in folding of proteins, 
Hydrophobic amino acid residues tend to cluster together in the protein core away from the surrounding aqueous environment. This hydrophobic core stabilizes the protein's three-dimensional structure by minimizing the unfavorable interactions between hydrophobic residues and water molecules. Now, in addition to the protein folding, this the hydrophobic effect also influences the self-assembly of the lipid molecules in the cell membranes. You know, lipids which have a hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tails spontaneously form biolayers in the aqueous solutions. Now, the hydrophobic tail of the lipid face inward, shielded from the water, while the hydrophobic head interacts with the surrounding water molecules. Now, one well-known example is the interaction between the drug molecule diazepam, commonly known as valium, and the GABA receptor. Now, diazepam is, you know, a drug, a benzodiazepine drug that is used as a sedative and anxiolytic. It binds to a specific site on the GABA receptor, which is a ligand-gated chloride ion channel. Now, the binding site on the GABA receptor has a hydrophobic pocket. Now, this is, this circle is the hydrophobic pocket. Now, this hydrophobic pocket is formed by a group of amino acids with non-polar side chains. Now, when diazepam enters the vicinity of the GABA receptor, its hydrophobic region interacts with the hydrophobic pocket on the receptor. Now, this interaction is driven by hydrophobic effect, which is the tendency of hydrophobic molecules to aggregate in the water to minimize their exposure to the surrounding polar solvent. Now, the hydrophobic interactions between the diazepam and the receptor stabilizes the binding of the drug to the receptor, enhancing its affinity and allowing it to exert its pharmacological effect. Now, the hydrophobic interaction between the diazepam and the receptor uh, stabilizes the binding of the drug to the receptor, enhancing its affinity and allowing it to exert its pharmacological effects. Now, this hydrophobic interaction also contributes to the selectivity of the diazepam through the GABA receptor. Other, uh, let's say any other drug comes, it cannot bind to the GABA receptor because it will not have that hydrophobic pocket. Diazepam only binds to the GABA receptor because it has a hydrophobic region and the GABA receptor has hydrophobic pocket. So, uh, this is, you know, highly selective for the amino acids arrangement in that region. Now, that was all for today. Keep following skadia.com for more such videos in the future. And please don't forget to download our app on the Android Google Play or the Apple App Store. From medical students to seasoned professionals, Scardia.com offers engaging and dynamic content for your educational journey.